Hi, it's Patricia Ryan Madsen here. I've had some requests to describe the process that I use to do my uh, plexiglass uh, prints. I think these may be called something like mono prints. Um, here's an example. I've been kind of fond of doing um, things that look a little like the sky and sea and ocean, and uh, but you could obviously do almost anything. The, uh, the primary thing you need is a, uh, a piece of plexiglass that is just a little bit smaller than the piece of paper you're going to use it on. I've got three sizes and uh, I use these two the most uh, because they're, they work really well for um, postcard size uh, images. And you notice that this one seems to be scratched up a little bit. Um, that's um, kind of on purpose to give the plexiglass a little bit more um, uh, ability to, um, to take stuff. Besides having a clean piece of plexiglass, the first step is um, you add some, uh, I use a small brush here, you start putting some of that uh, directly onto the surface of the plexiglass thing. Uh, sometimes, depending upon the kind of pattern or design you want, sometimes you can just make it smooth. Um, the thing is, you need to get your plexiglass uh, covered in the soap first, and then it's going to need to dry. I did this one a little bit earlier, um, and you can see it's kind of got bubbles on it. One's lined and one's bubbled. We're going to let these dry, and then I'll come back and show you the next step. A word about these plexiglass pieces. They're really simple. Um, what are they, Ron? An eighth of an inch? Uh, uh, quarter inch. Quarter inch. These are quarter inch plexiglass. And uh, my husband made me several shapes. This one's about, uh, what, I don't know. Five by seven. Five by seven and some of the others. The ones that I'm um, using a lot are just under the size of a, of a postcard. Um, and um, probably you can go to your hardware store and, and try to get a small piece of plexiglass and um, see if you can ask somebody that's got a, uh, some kind of power tool to the rounding the edges is, um, is kind of important because that allows you to make the print that's going to be pressed down into the paper. Here are some notes about the uh, paper I'm going to use when I get to the pressing part of it. I'm going to use two kinds of paper, uh, Ganshai, Gansei, pardon me, Debbie, my pronunciation. These are the, um, the formal Japanese papers that have um, a high degree of bleed, and they're going to be really good for this process because they're going to soak up the... Um, soak up the paint in a moment. I'm also going to use a heavyweight, this is a 300 pound weight uh, watercolor paper that I have um, just uh, folded until I've gotten small pieces. Okay, go. Okay, now these, um, these have dried pretty much. They're not completely dry. This one's got a few bubbles on it, you can see. I kind of um, I did this one splotchy and I did this one more lines. Okay, while these now are dry, I'm going to, um, uh, what do we got? I'm going to do one of my kind of um, beach scenes. So I'm just going to put, put paint directly on, on these guys here. Um, there's no real right or wrong way to do this. Uh, the, the thicker it is, the more chances there will be something interesting happening. So um, let me try this on both of them. Since I've got blue, I'm going to go blue in the middle. Uh, I'm going to do my sort of ocean sky beach scene. And dabbing this on. There we go. I'm going to change color here and do the sky blue um, I'll do some smaller sky blue I think I might get some I'm going to add some white into this
obviously anything can be um, can be any design. You see that the the paint is starting to puddle already, and now I want to make the kind of beach. Um, I'm gonna try to get the bottom to be more like sand. Um, So what we're doing is we're covering this with uh, a lot of paint. All right. Mm, and you, at this stage, you kind of work fast, usually. Although I suppose if you work slow, who knows what happens if it, um, it kind of dries up. Um, let's see if I can put something... A little more, a little yellow in here, maybe a little bit more brown. Okay, now, stop. You see that I've just painted directly onto the plexiglass that had soap under it, and now this is the wet side. I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to use here one of the Edigami papers, and I'm just going to drop this right on there and press it down. The, um, the paper soaks it up, and so there. Now, um, I can, let me do this with another one. I'm going to do this on some watercolor paper here. It has a slightly different uh, way of, um, all right. And what you can do right after, right after you've done the print, is you can take a little water and kind of, uh, oops, I didn't really mean for that to go over onto the other side. Anyway, but you can, um, you can work on these. I wouldn't say this is particularly gorgeous, but um, some of them, depending upon the uh, color and all, but that is a, um, this is a mono print. You can paint, then add some more color uh, to these. They're kind of nice with um, with abstract sorts of designs. Okay, these uh, these mono prints are really easy to do. Any kind of design or abstract, flowers uh, would be lovely. Um, experiment. All you need is a piece of plexiglass and your regular watercolor supplies and your imagination and a little bit, uh, a tablespoon of liquid soap. Um, use the soap, paint on top of the dried soap, and then press the wet thing into the paper. As you see here, peel it off, and you get beautiful designs. Good luck, and have fun making monoprints with plexiglass. Bye-bye.